Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is by the time you watch this. Uh, I hope that you started off this new year 2021 with a great start. I hope that it's a lot better for you than 2020. And I just hope that you and your families had a Merry Christmas, that you enjoyed the fellowship, and most importantly, that you remembered the reason for this season, that being Jesus Christ being born and sent into the world for us. But I also hope that you, as you came into 2021, that on your mind was the faithfulness and the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God that helped all of us make it through 2020 that gives us hope for a better year this year. And I hope that if you don't know that, if you, if you didn't come into this new year a little bit hopeful, a little bit excited, a little encouraged or even relieved, I hope that by the time I'm done with this message, that you will have a little bit of that hope, that you will have a little bit of that comfort and joy going into this new year. Because I don't know about you, but I think that we all need some good news. And I'm so thankful that God's Word is full of promises. It's full of hope, full of peace, and good news for us. It's so full of everything that we possibly need for every single situation that we'll ever go through in 2020, 2021, 2022. No matter the year, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, the Word of God is our answer, and we need to turn to it and get in it and hide it in our heart and get it inside of us so that we always have that to fall back on. But the title of my message today will be, What Do You Feel? What Do You Feel? And before I get started, before I read a verse, I'm going to, be, I'm going to read Hebrews 11, verse 6. And I'm, I would just would want to pray before we go any farther. But dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your faithfulness. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to bring your word. And God, I pray that you would anoint our ears to hear you. And God, that we would be doers of the word and not just hearers. And God, I pray that you would speak to us however you want to speak, Father. And God, we thank you for the blood of your son Jesus that was poured out for us to save us from our sins and to make heaven our eternal home, Lord. And in your precious and mighty name I pray. Amen. Hebrews 11, verse 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And just not necessarily right on line with my message, but that last part, says that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He, he tells us in the Bible, he says that when we seek him with our whole heart, we, we, we will definitely find him. He's not going to hide himself. But I think that it's important that we understand more than ever, we need to go after God. It, it, some things don't just come by you sitting back and being relaxed. Every once in a while, you need to go after God. You need to pray. You need to fast. You need to lay down some things, sacrifice things, sacrifice time, habits, whatever it is. But we need to be a people that diligently seek the Lord. And the reason why I say that is no matter what, whatever you seek, the Bible says, seek and you shall find. And whatever you go looking for, whatever you go seeking for, I promise you're going to find it. If you want to be scared and you're looking for reasons to be scared, I promise 100%, take it to the bank. You are guaranteed to find a reason to be scared. If you want to worry, I don't know why you would want to worry. I don't know why you would want to be scared 
or afraid or any of those things. But if you really want to, you will focus on things that you want to find. If you want to be happy every day, you'll find something to smile about. It might be small, it might be insignificant, but you will find a reason to be happy and smile that day. And I want us to, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I wonder how many Christians are actually living by faith right now in this time. I don't care if you got a red state, blue state, purple state, white state, black state, no matter what it is. Whatever is going on in America, we're so bipolar. You have one part of people that are ecstatic, that are so enthused, and you've got one part that's severely depressed. But I wonder how many Christians have more faith in God than whatever happens in the natural realm. I wonder how many people actually walk by faith and not by sight. And I'm as guilty as anyone. And I promise by a quick survey of Facebook, I don't think many of us are walking by faith. I think that we settle for what we see and not for what God has said. And I believe that it's important to always remember what God has said. And I want to go through a few things in His Word because sometimes we get overwhelmed by what we see and what we feel. And that's what I want to talk about. In 2020, chances are you have felt confused, you have felt worried, you have felt alone, you have felt depressed, you have felt scared, you have felt nervous, you have felt afraid. There are so many feelings that people have had in 2020 that it isn't even funny. There are people that have felt so isolated. There have been people that felt sick, people that felt lost, people that felt confused. How in the world, what in the world is going on? How did this happen? Why did this happen? Why Why did this happen to my family? Why did this happen in our country? Why is this crazy virus going on in the world? So many questions that people have and so many feelings to go with those questions and the uncertainties that we face. And believe it or not, I I, I hate to say it, but we will always have uncertainties. We will not. There won't be a day where we know everything. Some things are going to take us by surprise. And I think we are very, um, I don't know if emotional is the right word, but we feel so much in these times of distress, times of discouragement, times of being afraid and alone. But, and, and I thought of this as when you go to the doctor, a lot of times if you're in pain, they'll say on a scale one to 10, how, how, how do you feel? with 10 being the worst and one being being the best and i wonder if i if i pose that question to you if i pose that question to myself if i said blake or so and so on a scale one to ten how much fear have you felt this year would it be a 10, the worst there is? Would it be a 1? Absolutely nothing at, nothing at all. Would it be a 5, a 7, 3, or 4? If I, said, if I said, how alone have you felt this year? Would you say pretty bad, an 8 or a 9 or a 10, or, or would it be a 3 or a 4? If I, if I said, how, how, discourage, how much discouragement have you felt? Well, where would it be on that scale 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst? Would it be an 8 or a 9, a 4 or 5? And my other question is, what about feeling God? What about feeling the presence of God? If you had to rate that on a scale 1 to 10, have you felt 10 being the most or 1 being the least? Do you think that you have felt more of God's presence, more than you have felt your fears, more than you have felt your worries and your doubts, your sicknesses and things like that, your uncertainties, your unbelief, whatever it may be? Chances are I would 
that most people have felt much more of those things than they have God in His presence and the Spirit of God. But what I want us to know is that the things that God gives are much deeper than our feelings. The things that God offers to us are much deeper than the things that we feel in the heat of a moment and just out of, uh -uh, oh, I'm shocked. Oh, this just happened. So I automatically feel this way. And there, there, there's nothing wrong. You will experience being scared in life. You will experience worry and doubt and so on. You can list all the negative feelings, uh, hopeless, helpless. You, you can list them on and on and on. But what's important to keep in mind is that what God gives us, what God offers to us, will always come out on top of those feelings of doubt, of being unloved, of un unwanted, or feeling like we're not enough, feeling scared, feeling like we are alone, feeling depressed. The things of God always come out over all these mental and emotional attacks that come from sometimes our own choices, oftentimes what's going on in the world around us. Because if you're like me, you, you like to have everything in order as far as, you know, you want, you want to be able to control what's going on around you. And obviously, uh, that, that doesn't happen all the time. And in, in certain situations, that can be scary, that can be nerve-wracking. But it's important to remember, no matter what you are feeling, all these negative feelings that you have, they don't come out on top. You might experience them, but know that there's a better alternative. God offers something besides those things. You can, you can actually overcome your discouragement, your fear, and your anger and those things like that. But we have to be a diligent seeker of the Lord. We must seek His face while He may be found. We need to seek the face of God in prayer, in fasting, and getting in the Word of God like never before. That's how you get a hold of the things that God offers you. You can't just sit back and live like you always have. You need to go after God pursue Him, seek Him, get a hunger and a passion for Him. The Bible says that those that hunger and thirst shall be filled. you got to have a hunger and a thirst for the things of God. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and everything else will be added into you. You need to be hungry. The church needs to be hungry. And that, that goes along with another point I was going to going to talk about is the church, the light of the world, the salt of the, of the earth, the city that's supposed to be set on a hill and not be hid. The church, the godly people, the remnant of God that's on the earth, we need to truly be the light of the world. There needs to be something different about us in times of uncertainty, in difficulties, in storms, in trials, in tests, and battles. And many, many times in 2020, we had our spotlight, the time to shine. And more often than not, I feel like many times we, we flubbed it up. But, but thank God for grace and for mercy. And I'm not saying every single Christian is you know, terrible and stuff like that. But as a whole, the church could do better. We need to strive to do better. I don't, after all this trouble, you would think more people would be hungry, that church doors people would be running to. But I don't know about you, but I'm not seeing that in the way that I would think after everything that 2020 brought. I felt afraid. I felt nervous. I felt confused. All these things, you would think people would want to feel the presence of God and would flock to the presence of God. And that's what I want us to do. Forget all the negative things and say, we have felt enough of this. I'm ready to feel the presence and the nearness 
of God. But one of the first things, that, and I just thought of some general feelings that people had in 2020 with everything that was going on. And one of them was sadness, depression, just coming from the uncertainty, not knowing what's next, feeling, well, why this and why that? I, I have no understanding and no answers for what's going on. Well, the Bible says in Psalm 1611, this is God's offer to us. This is what's available to me and to you. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. In his presence, there's fullness of joy, and at his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. But where is it at? In his presence. In his presence is the fullness of joy. I don't know about you, but I'd much rather have joy than feeling sad and depressed. It makes me happier. It makes me live a lot better when i got joy. And it's important to know that joy is a knowledge. It comes from what we know. It's deeper than a happiness. Joy comes from knowing who you are in God and that you belong to Him. Joy comes from knowing that God will give you the victory in His time and in His way. But in His presence, there is fullness of joy. You've got to find it in His presence. You can't find it by looking at the news report that gives you the report that you want to hear. You've got to be in the presence of God to get the joy that can overcome the sadness and the depression and the discouragement and just the feelings of disappointment that you, you, you will face at some point. It may not be as bad as 2020. It might be worse than 2020. But I know one thing. The presence of God is the same. And it's always going to be the solution. It's always going to be full of joy. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He is the same, and so is His presence. So what He offers us is the same. This joy was available to us 20 years ago. It is right now, and it will be in 20 years. But seek the presence of God, and you'll begin to feel His joy. That is a gazillion times better feeling than feeling sad and depressed. What about being worried? I don't know about you, but I've been worried at times, a lot. And I would probably say that there's been something that has caused you to worry. You've probably, something caused you to sweat a little bit and get uneasy and get uncomfortable. And that's, that's fine, we all, we all do that, but we cannot let it take control over our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You'll keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. What's the key to peace? Not thinking and not paying attention to everything that's going on in the world. All the negative news. If you want to feel worried, you turn on the news. You keep it there. Let that be all you think about, all that you put in you. But if you will be fixed, if you'll fix your thoughts on the Lord, you stay focused on Him, the things of God, His goodness, His grace, His mercy, His faithfulness, how He has saved you, how He's healed you. You get in the Word and you read all of His promises. You, you read it from the front cover to the back cover. You search each and every one of these pages. You think on good things, pure things, just things, righteous things, thinking on the things of God. You fill your mind with thoughts like that, and you're going to experience peace, a true peace that can only come from God. If we run around to every news outlet and Facebook and Instagram and our neighbor next door and the guy down the street, the co-worker at work that does nothing but watch CNN and Fox and whatever news channels there are. 
you, all you do is focus on what they say and what you hear from those things. You're going to feel worried. You're going to feel like everything that, ha that, everything that could go wrong has go wrong. And I'm still worried something's going to go wrong. I don't even know if this bad thing's going to happen. But I'm worried to death that, that it will. The Bible says don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough trouble. You can barely handle today. You cannot handle today and tomorrow. The best solution to feeling worried. I'm sick and tired of feeling worried. I don't want to feel worried anymore. I want peace. And the Bible says... Where is it in fixing our thoughts and our focus on God? Fixing our thoughts and our focus on Him and His Word. That's important. Just like in Psalm 1611, our joy is coming from His presence. Our peace is coming from being focused on Him. He's our, the center point of our life, the center of our lives. Every, he's what we build our life around. What we... Everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we think, it goes through God. He is the foundation of our life. He is what we're fixed on and what we're focused on. In every single circumstance, you do that. You stay focused on Him. You get more of the Bible in you, more of the Word of God in you than social media. Your peace will not be near as shaky. You're going to have a firm peace, a stronger peace sense of that peace and it's available to anybody that anybody that comes to him when you focus on God the things that he offers you that peace that joy forgiveness and grace his goodness and his mercy those things when you focus on him you're magnifying you are focusing on on the things that He offers you besides giving your attention and your focus to the things that the world is shoving in your face. The world's wanting you to be afraid. It wants you to be worried. It wants you to feel alone. But if you take a step back and be a diligent seeker of God, get in His presence and focus on Him and get hungry for Him and seek Him and seek His face, then your focus begins to shift from... Everything, the feelings of the world to, hey, in the presence of God, I can feel joy. When I'm focused on Him, I can have peace. I can rest good because I'm not worried about every little thing that might and can and has and might will go wrong. The whole difference is seeking the face of God getting hungry for Him and His presence, going after Him. I'm trying to, I, I don't know if, if this is the best way to word it, and i got other things to talk about, but the best way that I can explain it is I'm trying to get you, you have felt all these things, all these negative feelings in 2020. I, I don't want to feel like 2020 all over again. I want what God is offering me. Have you felt weak? Have you felt defeated? Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I want to feel the strength of God. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You feel that joy. And you're going to feel strengthened coming from the presence of God and trusting in Him and looking to Him, obeying Him. Those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Those that wait on Him. When you obey God and you, your focus is on Him and not what's going on around you, you will experience the things that God wants you to experience. He wants you to experience joy and peace and strength. He wants you to feel encouraged and strengthened each and every day. We won't feel that way if we are not focused on Him and what He has for us, though. If we continue to settle for just being sad, being scared, being depressed, feeling uh, like we're the victim and defeated and like we're weak. He offers everything that we need. 
You need strength to go on in life. You need joy. You need peace. It's not fun living without those things. God wants you to have those things. And the good news is He has it all. And He has an endless supply of it. An eternal, everlasting supply of it. The Bible says that He's loved us with an everlasting and an eter eternal love. He has an eternal peace for us. He has a new strength for us every single day. His mercies are new every single morning. He has an endless supply of what we need. What about feeling alone when everything's shut down? Can't go to school. Can't go to work. Don't do gatherings with X amount of people. Did you feel isolated? Did you feel alone from quarantine and isolation and being separated from everybody? I know some people felt alone. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. God's never going to fail you. You trust Him. Things might look bad. It might feel bad. But I promise at the end of the day, God is not going to fail. And God's never, ever going to be defeated. I don't care who's in the Senate, who's in the House of Representatives, who is your boss at work, who's in the White House, who's driving a car, who, who, whoever your boss is, anything like that. God is never ever going to be defeated by man and the plans of man and by our reasoning and our logic. A verse that I really like, Psalms 27.10 Even, even if my father and mother abandon me, my father and my mother, I don't know about you, but I would feel pitiful and pathetic. I don't know, I, I don't know if there's words to describe my thoughts, if my mom and dad just, Blake, we're done with you, we're leaving you. I would, I could only imagine the depression, the confusion, and everything else that it would leave me with. It says, even if the closest people to me abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. God sticks with us. The main thing is we don't stick with Him. God sticks with us. We need to stick with Him. He's here in all this trouble, in all this mess. He's right in the middle of it with us. But do, do we allow it? We say, do we say, okay, here comes trouble. I'm getting as close to God as I possibly can. Or do we allow that trouble to put space between us and God? He sticks with us. But do we stick with with him he, he'll never leave us he'll he'll be with us if we make our bed in hell the bible says that he'll be with us he'll never leave us nor forsake us that's a truth i don't know about you i love people i love being around people i love my family i love my friends i love talking to them i don't want to live life alone i would be miserable God doesn't want you to live alone he'll place people in your life but even better than people God himself is never going to leave you never going to forsake you he's right by your side in the midst of everything and he'll always stick with us but we need to stick with him especially as people that are Christians we need to stick with him we got to understand Hey, we're not Christians just in the good times, but also in the bad times. Not just in the bad times, but also in the good times. We need to have a consistency to our faithfulness to God because His faithfulness to us, yeah, it doesn't miss a beat. What about this, lost? Sure, many, many people, 2020 was a different year. I bet a lot of people say, I need to get things right with God. Maybe you say that right now. Today, maybe you're saying, I, I, need to, I feel lost. I'm far away from God. I, I need to be saved. Luke 19.10, this is what he offers to us. He says, For the Son of Man came to seek 
and save those who are lost. All who call upon the, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. Putting your trust in Him, admitting that you're a sinner, believing that He died for you, and believing that He's coming back to get us. And what a glorious day that's going to be to take us on up to heaven and escape the cruelty of this world and the confusion and the chaos of it. And Jesus is still seeking and saving those who are lost. The Holy Spirit is still knocking on the door of people's hearts, convicting them, letting them not get sleep because He's pursuing them, drawing them to try to repent, getting, trying to get people to a point where they humble themselves before God because there is coming a day where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess and nobody is escaping that day. Nobody, every single knee and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord, that He's in control, that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And He is the only way to the Father. There's coming a day where all of us who were once lost but have found grace in Jesus are now going to be taken to our eternal home and it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be beautiful living in heaven forever, living in the presence of God eternally. That's available to you no matter how bad, how lost, how far away you feel from God right now. Eternal life is your free gift to the worst of the worst, to the lowest of the low, eternal life is what God offers for us. And He is still, He is still busy. Jesus is still busy seeking and saving those that are lost, going after people. And what about this one? I, I'm about done, but what about this one? I know. What about feeling sick in our bodies? What about feeling sick, dealing with diseases. Psalms 103 says, He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. All diseases, every single one can be healed by God. By His stripes, we are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Heal. The healing power is in the Word of God and in the blood of Christ that poured out not just for our sin, but for the sicknesses that we go through. Feeling sick, whether it's corona, cancer, diabetes, whatever it is, all kinds of sicknesses and so, so, so many sick people. And if you've lost loved ones in 2020, I know many people that have passed away. I want to I want to encourage you and say they are healed if they passed away. They are healed. We're just healed in a different way, but be encouraged if someone goes to heaven, if they died with a sickness, they died sickly, and they go to heaven, they don't have to deal with that sickness anymore. They're in a lot better shape than me and you are. I don't know how, I know it makes you sad. And many times you question why you pray and you pray and you pray and God seemingly lets someone pass away, but I promise He's in control, that He is good. And I want to encourage you, keep praying and keep the faith. This is a completely different message, but I want you to know something before I'm done. And I want to go ahead and say it. You might feel like you've done nothing this year, but your biggest accomplishment is keeping the faith. If you have kept the faith in 2020 through heartache, through trials, through storms, through testing, through unanswered prayers where you feel like God did not answer you, if you have kept the faith and kept your faith in God, kept trusting Him, kept seeking Him, kept obeying Him, you are accomplished. That is the greatest accomplishment. And I applaud everybody 
for keeping the faith and fighting a good fight, even when it's not easy, even when it's difficult, even when it's confusing, even when it is, even when you kind of feel like, I, I don't know if I can keep going, but you did. You kept the faith. In the last few verses I want to read, Galatians 5, 22 through 20, 23, says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. All these are good things. I don't know about you, but I'd like to have them all. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. These are the things that comes out of us by having the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit in us. These are the things that the Holy Spirit produces in our life. Being a Christian can produce love and joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. We feel whatever we are filled with. If you fill yourself with the presence of God and His joy, you're going to feel that joy. If you, if you fill yourself with news and discouragement and negative news, you're going to feel discouraged. You're going to feel down. You're going to feel confused and sad. What goes in comes out. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we, whatever we use our words for, the power of life and death are in the tongue. We eat the fruit of it in our actions. What we reap, we sow. Sow the things of God, and that's exactly what you'll reap. The things that the Spirit of God produces in us, as I said, He offers things that are deeper than a feelings. Deeper than feelings. So they're not just feelings, but they're a lifestyle. Our lifestyle cannot just be feeling, but we can have a lifestyle of living in love, living in peace, Living in joy, living in long suffering, in gentleness, in goodness, living in faith, in meekness, and in temperance. That can be what makes up our life day in and day out if we will seek God and we are ready to fill Him. The last verse is Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You, we have felt everything else in the world in 2020. My prayer, my hope is that you would be ready to feel the presence of God in a measure like never before in 2021. That you won't settle for feeling the same things as you did in 2020. But that you will want to feel the presence of God. You'll want to feel His nearness, His goodness, His faithfulness. You'll want to experience those things. And those things are available to us. But I hope that the church will rise up in 2021 with hope, unashamed, with strength, with courage, and with boldness. Seek the face of God. Go after God. That is the simplest message that I, I think I've ever got. Is I, I don't I don't want the church being bound to our feelings of what I, all the hardships we face. I want us to feel the presence of God and it to empower us and in, and enable us to do what God is wanting us to do on the earth right now, in this hour and at this time. I want the presence of God, the compassion of Christ, to be our driving force. I want it to be the thing that controls us, the thing that has the final say, not in what our fears say and our worries and our doubts and unbelief say. And I hope that you got something out of that. But remember, no matter how you have felt in 2020, it's a new year. It's a new day. We got a new chance. Let's make the most of it. Let's seek God like never before and get after the presence of God like never before. And I promise you're going to be filled with the things of God. And that's what we need are the things of God. I must decrease and He needs to increase. The world has had enough of Blake Ramey 
They need Jesus Christ shining through me. And it's the same thing with you. The world has seen enough of you. We need Jesus Christ shining through every believer. And it's not going to happen unless we seek God and we go after God and say, God, I want what you have and I want what's available to me through you. Let's all just bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your faithfulness. God, I'm, I'm thankful that we can feel your love and your peace and your joy and the strength, the forgiveness, the grace, the breakthrough, the deliverance, the freedom, the clarity that you offer us. And God, I pray that you would convict those that are lost, that you would bring them to salvation, that they would experience your saving grace. And God, I pray that this word would take root in someone's heart, encouraging them and allow them to say, hey, 2021 can be my best year yet. God has something for me in the middle of this mess, in the middle of this chaos. God has a plan for me and my family. And God, I pray that that's what this message does, that it shows people that God has something for His people in the deepest, darkest times. And it's to enable us and empower us to be better representatives and ambassadors of Christ here on the earth. And it's a lot more fun living the way that He has designed us to live. It's a lot more fun living out the plan and the purpose that He has for us other than running away from it. God, and we thank You for the blood of Your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank You for Your Word. Pray that it take root in our hearts, bring forth fruit that remains. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.